Welcome to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. We coach people every day on their money and how to plan for the future. As financial advisors, we're here to have an honest conversation and educate you on how to money. Intentionally and passionately to hit your money goals. And we'll throw in some sports talk along the way. Our mission and goal of this podcast is to improve your money journey and help you create the financial life you deserve. So let's talk money. And sports. Welcome back to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I am Bailey Ashbrook, investment advisor representative, staying at 5'11 tall. I think my wingspan's, I don't know, longer than my height and lefty, <laughs> so still. Un- Southpaw. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, well, Bailey, I'm not sure what my wingspan is, but I do know what my name is. Uh, it's Cole Peterson. I'm a partner and investment advisor representative with Central Financial Group here in Fort Dodge, and I suck at golf. Yeah, I hear you. This is Cole Jasky, financial advisor. Uh, You know, probably wear many, many other caps. My wife would probably call me something different. But uh, yeah, glad to be here. Hey, shout out to the, for anyone that's watching uh, the video here, the the YouTube channel, uh, we're starting to get official in here, man. We've got cameras, like shout out to Spend Marketing on all the, all the professionalism they're bringing on the podcast. But if it's starting to, the room itself starting to really feel like a, a, a real podcast studio. Yeah, yeah and, and speaking of uh, spin marker, I'm not going to let us yeah, forget Caleb say. this time. Yeah. Hey, guys, Caleb Westall here uh, with Spin Market, producer of How to Money with Cole and Cole, uh, digital media designer for Spin Market. So, yes, we've been doing lots of upgrades to the studio, so watch the video and you can see them. Yeah, Caleb's a real deal. He's got us sounding good, looking good, doing Thanks. all the things. And the only reason I brought my wingspan, and I used to know it, and I'm a lefty because I was just saying, like, you still can't guard me. You still can't beat me. Just oh, that's man. the direction I was going. Well, I've been, I've been playing against my seventh grade son, and and his wingspan's got to be. I mean, he's he, tall, so he's tall. He's he's five foot eleven, wears size thirteen shoes. He's in seventh. He hasn't even turned thirteen years old. He's twelve years old. He's and, so uh, big. Yeah, wingspan is a thing in basketball. Yeah. My gosh, if uh, mine was always like short, Camera. but. Yeah. Hopefully for the archives here in the future, we've all got pretty young kids that the, yeah. the future of athletics around our area. Hope we're all, we're all as athlete, athlete parents, we're all like, come on, yeah. kids, you know, but who knows yeah. where they develop. But uh, hey, don't say yeah. all. I am not an athlete. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. It didn't work. Yeah. 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 Cole's girls are also very tall. Well, Molly, his wife, she's six. She's like six, two. I'm six, yeah. three. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, it runs in the family, but, uh, yeah, we're, We're excited about the future, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. So we're going to cover a lot of new topics. There's a lot of changes going on in the economy, a lot to know. Um, So we're going to update you on some new IRA limits, student loan forgiveness, and Social Security adjustments. And we just had our Social Security seminar a month ago, or this month. Yeah, no, it was October... uh, Six. Six, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, went really well. Love doing those events. So Cole, Jay, give us a little update. What's going on in the Social Security... Yeah, recently, um, and we were talking about this in the seminar that there was, you know, most likely going to be um, one of the largest cost of living adjustments. Uh, you know, we were hearing over nine percent, but it did just come out. I believe last week, uh, Social Security Administration came out eight point seven percent starting in in twenty twenty three uh, cost of living adjustments. So I don't know. So wh- so yeah, let, let's talk about what that actually means to the, the person that is collecting Social Security. So it doesn't mean anything to me and Cole and, and Bailey uh, about our Social Security because we're not collecting Social Security. But if someone is collecting $1,000 a month today, gross, let's just say $1,000 a month gross, um, next in January of 2023, their payment will go up to $1,087. That's so, awesome if you're collecting. I mean, that's that's a difference maker, especially with inflation, which is why they raise yeah. it. So unfortunately, yeah, when, <laughs> when cost of goods is going up 8%, you know, it's a break even, but it's better than than nothing. And one of the, um, I don't know, you were looking this up of one yeah. of the largest of it, all time. It's the, it's the second largest of all time, the largest since 1981, which was 11.2%, which if it, I don't remember 1981, <laughs> I know the jokes are coming. <laughs> I was two years old. <laughs> Um, but what, you don't have any two-year-old memories. <laughs> I, I don't think so. But it, but in 1981, it was it was kind of it was kind of a period like we're having right now with rampant inflation. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why they did such a big uh, cost of living increase then. <clears throat> Excuse me, co- cost of living adjustment at that point. It's also referred to as COLA. So if you heard that, that's what that is. It's the same thing. But the average American that is collecting social security. I saw this stat the other day. It's going to get $146 more a month 
mean, that that's significant, yeah, especially dollars. we know that a lot of people, the only thing they collect in so in retirement is social security. Um, so, you know, then pension plans are, are, you know, few and far between, and, and this is their monthly income. So if I, if I'm giving an extra 150 bucks a month, I mean, I'm probably either going to spend it or save it. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, inflation for the most part has a, probably a greater impact on, on younger folks with kids, things that you're spending more cost goods or have more debt things there. So people that are in, in retirement, it's a, yeah, obviously going to the grocery store more expensive and, and things as such, but uh, those are real dollars and, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't generally go backwards. So, so even if inflation does come down and, you know, say it's down next year to more moderate normal levels and you got that eight, uh, you know, 8.7% increase. I mean, those are, those are real dollars for folks. I, I don't believe it has ever gone backwards. I, I think the I just going to add. I don't think so. It, I remember a 0% increase. I believe it was in 2007, eight, nine, it was during the recession, but I, I but obviously it's not an increase It's 0%, just no increase, but I don't, I don't remember there ever being a negative. I was just going to ask that. And Cole J just remind people, what is your social security benefit based on? It's based on your earning, earning history. There, so, so there's a, is it 30, highest 35 five five years. years? Yep. Highest 35 years. Um, so, so it is important. That's one thing that we talked about. And this is kind of a quick tip, you know, for, yeah. for our listeners that, um, make sure you're tracking when you look at your social security statement, confirm all your earning years are on there, especially your, your, probably your latest ones. Cause generally your income goes up as you age. You want to make sure you have credit cause your bottom ones fall, fall down. Well, and, and another, another thing that we, we hadn't discussed before the podcast that we were going to talk about, but I just remembered Medicare actually cut their costs. So if you're on right. social security and Medicare, you actually, I think a positive $180 a month approximately because Medicare costs came down and I'm talking about the, they have different brackets for how much you collect, you know, how much you pay for part B and things like that. And some people are on Medicare advantage. So I'm just talking in general, but if you are on uh, Medicare and collecting social security next week, next year in January, you're about 180 bucks in the positive. Right. And going back to what Cole J was saying, cause we were talking about this seminar there are people, they have your income wrong on your social security nope. statement. So you have to go back and say, Hey, cause it will change your payment. Like if they're missing a, a right zero. Now. Yeah. I have a client right now that's in, you know, going back and just getting the confirmation correct. And yeah, they make, how uh, are they doing that? The, or the, they're just contacting the, the yeah, office. They're working with a, a local, their local social security administration office, but yeah, not the easiest, you know, frustrating. Yeah. Not to, uh, you know, beat down the government at all, but not, and not the most efficient process by, but, by any means, but you need to have the conversation. <clears throat> that's why you're encouraging people to look mm -hmm. more yeah. frequently than the day before you file for social security. <laughs> right. you, you should, you should look at your social security every three to five years yep. is what I recommend people. And, and if you're working with us, I usually have them at least print that off or log on while, while you're in my office, log on to that. So I can see it and make sure that your earnings history looks correct. Yep. We do that a lot with clients. All right, that's good. That's good to know on Social Security. There's another thing going on. A uh, little disclaimer. We're not going to get political. I know there's plenty of feelings out about student loan forgiveness. That's not why we're talking about it. It's an awareness thing. It's important. I think we were talking about the statistic. How many? 43 million people are affected by student loans in the United States right now. Have a student loan balance, I think, is the yeah. statistic. Uh, Google that if you want to check me. But Cole Peterson, tell me what's going on. If I have student debt, what should I be doing? Yeah, so you need to fill out an application, uh, the website federalstudentaid.gov. Uh, if you make less than 125000 as a single uh, person or a married filing jointly couple, uh, 250000 need you need to fill out the application before December 31st. That's big to know. Right. And, and, and then they just came out that they're going to like pause the... Um, pause the forgiveness basically, but they didn't pause the applications. They still, still have to fill out the applications before December 31st. So if you make less than those uh, amounts and if, and if you have questions on that, th they'll let you know on the, on the website, uh, if you, if you qualify, but you have to have one of those federal loans that pause during the, the COVID time. And, uh, st and also parents are eligible for these. If the, if the parent yep. plus loans, they have to apply separately from the children is what I read. So Correct. if I had a loan, my parent had one under me, we both submit an application. So they, e you each could qualify for 10 up to 10,000, 10, the parent plus. That's what I was just going to yeah. ask. How much relief are people getting? Cool. Right. Right. So you're, you, so each individual person or parents of that person get the $10,000 forgiven. If you had a Pell grant in college, uh, that you were a recipient of, you can qualify it for up to twenty thousand dollars. 
Okay, what if I had 30,000 student debt this year? I've been paying away because I was taking advantage of paying at the principal, no interest, why everything was paused, and mine are all gone. Can I still apply and get my money back, or am I just like, shoot, I paid it? Yeah, you can You can still apply. So if you had a, a, a balance when the COVID pause started in March of 2020, then you can still apply and you can get refunded the amount that you paid on that. Yep, that's what I thought. I was just checking. What if I've consolidated all of mine? Am I, can I? Unfortunately, you do not qualify at that point. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Has to be a federal loan. Oh, you're right. See, see this, but these are good questions. And we were talking about the importance of this. Like they're not going to reach out for you to get your loans forgiven. It's like, you're going to have to work. I don't think the application is going to take that long. I think I read somewhere, maybe five minutes and no proof of ID, but um, maybe proof of income. So yeah, that's good to know. And also yeah, you're going to have to, you, and then they can probably see your income on your tax statements. Mm-hmm. I would assume or your tax records that you file, but um, yeah, if you, if you consolidated loans and into a, you know, just got a regular bank loan, uh, with student loans from, you know, name a bank doesn't matter. Uh, you do not qualify. These have to be part of the federal plan that you No uh, private loans. Correct. Correct. Exactly. There we go. Yeah. That's great information. I just want to add, like, obviously with these type of things, there's always going to be scammers. We're in a world of scammers. Our industry is getting them all the time. So make sure you do reliable research, but advocate for yourself. If you have student debt, obviously take advantage of this and use the money elsewhere, but go find it on the website, make sure it's reliable and avoid those scammers. So yeah. So, so just come back to the scammers part. The, the federal government does not call you and ask you for your social security number or for you to click on this link to apply. The, the, you have to go to the federal student government or studentaid.gov and apply for this. There, there's no other way to go about it. So if you get contacted any other way, any other way, it is not, it is a scam of some oh. sort. That's, that's good to know because I'm sure some people will get very excited and they'll be like, yeah, of course I'll give you my information. It's probably going to be rampant. though. probably be a lot of scam calls, text messages, all kinds of stuff. Anytime there's a big government aid type program like this, there's there's always a abundance of things. I've already gotten text messages about have you? it. Yeah. 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 Like no. scammer messages very no. clearly. So have you done your application, Caleb? I don't have any student debt. So. Good for you. Yeah. That was a good clap. job. Good yeah. job. Good job. Yeah. So if you know someone, yep, just be educate yourself and we're here to walk alongside you. So we're going to take a quick break on that. This podcast is produced by Spin Market and Digital. Located in Fort Dodge, Iowa, Spin Market's highly skilled team can help you increase your market by updating your website, improving SEO, designing advertisements, and producing podcasts that will grab the attention of your market. Contact Spin Market today for all your digital marketing needs at digital agent at spinmarket with two K's.com or call us at 515-302-8026. And to learn more, visit our website at www.spinmarket with two K's.com. That's digital agent at spinmarket.com or 515-302-8026 or visit our website www.spinmarketwith2ks.com. All right, I got another question. It's kind of important. Who's the worst two and five team at this table? Is it Cole Jasky's team? Cole Peterson's team. Like, or Caleb's team. Caleb's team. Caleb, you're Caleb's too, team. Oh, is it? Caleb's team's five. worse. Our NFL teams Our are NFL not, teams. not doing good. Yeah, my, my Steelers played last night, uh, Monday Night Football. No good. Nothing Not about rough. it. Yeah. Panthers got to win this weekend. Yeah. That but was we're still, still terrible. They were Coaches. underdogs by like 10 points, I think, in that game. Huh? They were underdogs by like 10 yeah, points in that game. They were. And uh, they were expected to get crushed, and they came out and beat Tom Brady. The coachless, quarterbackless team beat Tom Brady. So Christian McCaffrey less. Oh, yeah. Christian yeah. McCaffrey yeah. got traded. So. Yeah, he played for the 49ers. They got crushed, too. But, uh, yeah, my Broncos are about the only team that maybe has enough talent to turn this thing around. But I, I You're not I'm a not, quitter. You're I'm not, not a giving quitter. up yet, but I, th- I still think they could get to, like, 10-7 and seven or something like that and possibly make it into the wild card. But I'm You realize they have to go 8-2 and two the next yeah. 10 weeks? Though. Possible. That's, There's a chance. Don't crush my dreams yet, Caleb. Look, Bailey's, right. just, Bailey's over there. Just can't wait to talk about you know, her. The Cowboys her are winning. Cowboys. I know. I'm just excited about them for Cowboys? Luke. Yeah. Hey. Again, happy husband when the Cowboys win, so my house is happy. Are they six and one? Five, five and two. two. Five and two. Okay. Yeah. That's it still was a game good. Sunday and then 
they pulled away at the end. So. Yeah, the Lions they they, they dominated yeah. that game though. Yeah, what was it? The third quarter it was only seven yeah, point game. I think the the Lions only scored six points the whole game. Yeah. I think they Five they had much. control of it. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. How about, how about the Iowa football teams in oh. college? <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> Yikes. Wolf. Wolf. I actually found out a cool stat about Cole Jasky's football career I'm going to bring up. What did you say you had the most attempts or what was it? What you, you, come on. At, at one point, I, I don't know, again, our fact checkers here, but I, <laughs> one season I was talking about, uh, I was talking about not remembering stats specifically. And this was the quarterback in me of like, I said, I throw too many interceptions. You know, I threw too many interceptions. So I had to be able to have a short memory and forget about things. And I was like, well, at one point, I was leading uh, leading in attempts, you know, for one one season. So I was like, when you throw the ball that many times, you're gonna in the throw country, some inter- didn't you? Say? Yeah, in the country for a Division two, but yeah, a lot of lot of interceptions for anyone who wants to go and look up my old old stats there. It's all gone so, in downhill for the Peacock since yeah, you left. Yeah, yeah, tough tough time to be a to state of Iowa football fan just in general. Yeah, yeah I is. saw I saw a game the uh, the high school game. At Webster City didn't throw a pass. What last week? <laughs> Incredible. Did not throw one pass. That sounds like a horrible game to go to. It's old school, yeah, they, man. I, well, I mean, of course, Fort Dodge plays against them now, and they are, they're unbelievable uh, running the ball, though. They, are they? They, they? they really only run about seven or eight different plays. They got but a good they're system. They're just so good at good it. Good system. Really? They, yep. Interesting. Yeah. They really Culture. only they throw out of necessity than, than varying the offense. They, they, it, again, they didn't throw it all, so they must have been running the ball good. And, and they did. They they crushed some team like 63 to nothing or something at that point. Oh, my so. gosh. I didn't know that. Fun fact. Fun so, fact. so not that any of us care about this, but just in case there's somebody listening, the Astros are playing the Phillies in the World Series. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Astros swept the Yankees. Mm-hmm. And the Phillies surprised everybody. Uh, yep. Beat the Padres, yeah. Yeah, so. so. I don't really pooping. care who wins the World <laughs> Series. Are your Golden State Warriors doing any good? Uh, three games into the year, they're two and one. Yeah, just so started. They the yeah. Lakers look terrible with LeBron. They're zero and three. I know it's crazy. Everyone, it's what? yeah. The the whole Russell Westbrook drama is kind of ridiculous because hmm. the NBA is drama. It should be like a reality TV yeah, show with like the amount reality. of trading and like drama and everyone's. I'm not. I, this, I know very few NBA fan, like true like NBA fans, sides Caleb. Oh, my oh. sister, she'll statistic and spitball, and she does fantasy league for NBA. It's wild. I'll give one stat and then we can move on. Is, <laughs> Get um, it, Caleb. The one thing I found interesting is people always talk about the big building, the big three, and like mm-hmm. making the big three, and that's the team who always wins. It is the Golden State Warriors' top eleven guys in their roster. Eight of them were their own draft picks. Wow, well, that's cool. And four of their starting five. They have two guys who they picked up on minimum contracts and one guy they traded for. Everyone else is their own draft picks. Whereas look. you look at the Lakers and they have one draft pick who sits at the end of the bench. Yep. That is so, unusual in the yeah. NBA. Yeah. And there, there has been some championships that have been won the big three way, mm-hmm. but there are uh, you're you're trying Homegrown, to say like there is a way yeah. to do it the other Culture. way. Yep. Yeah, different different way. Right? And I don't the like Cel- the well you think teams. last year's finals, the Celtics was the same as the Warriors. Yeah. They did that. So yeah. it's just yeah. people do it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It's different. Okay. We, these guys go all day about sports. We know it. All right. We got the boys done talking about sports. Caleb, I like the NBA. I'm not on it like you, though. But, okay. We're going to do a new little segment. Now that we're getting low on our routine official, it's going to be called Dollar. No, Colby, you tell them what it's going to be called. You tell them. Tell them the pun. No, no, no. Do it. No. Dollar no. and cents. cents. Get it? But it's spelled S E N. S E. If we wrote it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Like not sense. Like And what's what's the point of this segment? What's what is yeah, yeah. what are they gonna talk about? We're gonna do a little update of what's going on in the economy financially. Just anything that is pertaining to finance that's going on in the world, we'll update you on just to give you a little tidbit. Okay, I'm gonna let Cole J do our first little segment of dollar and cents. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. All right, Cole J. Love it, love it. Yeah, so a lot of things going on in the world right now, right? A lot of things to be negative about. Um, and I'm an optimist at heart. You know, uh, you got election coming up, all kinds of things, high interest rate inflation. Um, but you know what? We're coming off a really, really, really good week in the market last week. So for the first time in a long time, we got some positive numbers reporting. I'm just going to stick with the broad-based index, the S&P 500. It was up 4.75% last year, last week. So Yay. On, a, on a high note, you know, uh, feels pretty, feels pretty good. And even, you know, us, that's, we always talk about this. We're emotional coaches. You know, we, we do that a lot and, and it gets wearing on us as advisors. We deal with it every day and see statistics and numbers and, you know, seeing, seeing, um, uh, you know, account values go down. It's not easy for anyone. So 
positive, stay, stay optimistic out there and a good week. You know, hopefully we yeah. have another one. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, I thought another thing you brought up was, uh, was very interesting. And, and I think diversification is probably not something we probably talk about it, uh, enough on this, but, um, just keeping your portfolio diversified and, and Cole's going to give an example of that. Yeah. So, um, I, I didn't even, I mean, I knew there's, so there's 11 sectors in the, yeah, in the, do S- a little education yeah, in the S and P 500. And there's, there's right now there's one sector that's significantly positive for the year. Uh, and that's the energy sector. And, you know, we never, we never tell anyone to put all their eggs in one basket, but yeah, the energy sector is up 63% as a whole. Wow. Um, you know, and the rest of all 10 other 10 sectors are down eight, uh, point eight percent or more, all the way down to the the services sector, which which is down a negative thirty six percent. So, yeah, a little. So we have a hundred percent swing from the yeah. best to the worst, and that's where where do you pick those sectors? Right, very hard to to say. Hey, which sector I'm going to rotate all, all into energy or all into you know financials, whatever it might be. And that's where diverse diversification does matter. And you have some energy exposure in your portfolio. Uh, you know, you're probably doing better than the overall market. Absolutely. Market. Yeah. Dude, that's yeah, great to be. know. Yeah. Cause, because, you know, say you only have 5% in that, that sector in energy sector, or say, uh, let's just say 10% for, for round numbers that, that 10% is going to be up 36% where everything else is down, but at least you're going to, you know, have some money that is in the positive. Right. Yep. So thank you, Cole Jasky for doing our first dollar and cents. We'll see how that goes, but it was fun. That's, that's good information to know. All right, we're going to swing another way. What's going on? IRA updates. You can contribute a little more. Tell us, Cole Jasky, what's going on with all that? Yeah, so uh, same thing as there was the Social Security update. The The IRS put out, uh, you know, their their bulletin with the 2023 contribution changes. So a couple highlights. There's a lot of, you know, you can go out and find the uh, find the, the bulletin out there on, online or Googling it and, and finding it. But a couple highlights that we thought about. You know, first and foremost, um, 401k, 403b, you know, employer sponsored retirement plan contributions going up to 22,500 for below age, if you're below age 50. And then uh, if you're above age 50, you get the catch up on top of the 22,500. Was, was 20,500. 20, yep, so yep. it's up almost 10% where All you right. can, you can put that much more into your 401k. Uh, so 20,500 was 2022 and 2023, you'll be able to put 22,500. Yeah, and then shifting over to to the individual retirement accounts or IRAs, um, moving from six thousand in twenty twenty for for under age fifty up to sixty five hundred, and it's an extra thousand if you're above you know above age fifty. So sixty five hundred um, for the twenty twenty three tax year for either Roth or traditional IRA uh, contributions. Yeah, so that's great, especially for people that are, are in the younger age brackets that are doing Roth contributions and, and maybe are have the option or opportunity to max that out. They now go from five hundred dollars a month to you know five hundred and twenty dollars a month or so that they can um, they can they can do into that Roth IRA. Right. So if I'm already doing the max, I could contact you and be like, Hey, please bump this up. I would like to hit the max every year with throughout the month. Yeah. Start it, start it in January, obviously. So yeah, that's good to know. And okay. I have a little extra money. Should I put it in my 401k Cole Jasky or my IRA? I mean, they're both going up. Which one should I do? Does yeah, it matter? Yeah. Great, great question. We get that, uh, question a lot, right? What, what side should I do pre-tax or, or, you know, which is the traditional IRA or after tax, which is the Roth IRA. And I always, um, like to give an example, right. And, uh, saying, okay, if you go Roth versus pre-tax and I'm going to do a pre-tax example right now. All right. So, so a good example of this would be, I'll use a thousand dollar increments here. So, so say you're hypothetically paying 20% in taxes, your effective tax rates, 20%. So, uh, if you, for every thousand dollars you contribute pre-tax to a traditional IRA or, you know, pre-tax 401k can apply to the same example, you're saving $200 in taxes for that current tax year. So you multiply that by however many thousands you're doing and, and that's what your immediate tax savings is for that current tax year. Yeah. Obviously on the back end is then when you pay the taxes, right? And, and traditionally thinking why someone would do it on the front end versus, you know, doing the Roth sometimes is the tax savings is more important to them now, or they might think their income is going to be lower 
when they retire and start paying, paying it out, but not always the case. And that's where, you know, planning matters, matters and, right. and your income matters. Right. So some things are more important to others. And, and I'm a big proponent of Roth. And the reason being is we are in historically lower tax brackets right now. So in your example, yes. Uh, if you put it in pre-tax and I'm not saying Cole's wrong, I'm just in giving this example that if I paid, uh, if I put it in pre-tax and I save that $200 in taxes now, well, what says that tax brackets don't go back to historical highs when I retire and now I've got to pay instead of 20% in taxes, maybe I'm in the 40, 50% tax bracket and now I'm On now, now I've kind of sunk my yeah. retirement because I did everything pre-tax. So again, we were real big components of buckets, uh, trying to have different buckets uh, of money uh, with the Roth contribution. So I'll go the other way. I'll do the same example that, that Cole just gave and the difference being... I put a thousand dollars in Roth. I've already, if I'm in the same same person, I paid the two hundred dollars in taxes on that thousand dollars. So I already paid the taxes this year. That thousand dollars now grows until I want to take it out after age fifty nine and a half, or it's been in for five years, and I don't have to pay any taxes. So I don't have to worry about right. tax brackets, anything in my Roth. Again, I think there's good good and, and bad to both. Um, not necessarily bad, but, uh, well, I guess situational. there is it's yeah, very situational. It's situational and how much you make that, and how much you have and what your retirement looks like. Like, obviously I'm younger. I put a lot of money in Roth. It's the least amount it's ever going to be. I can, you know what I mean? I don't need the tax break too much. I have three little kids now and I go pull it tax free someday. If I want to just pull 30,000 out, I'm pulling 30,000 out and you don't have to speculate on the, yeah. that, that's a, that's yeah. a valid point is always like, you don't have to speculate what the tax is going to look like 20 mm-hmm. years, 30 years, 10 years from now. Um, and I, you hear this a lot is like, you know, our, uh, we got to pay for all this spending and right. the guy, you know, like at some point, so, and taxes is the number one, you know, way to revenue, get it back. Yeah. Revenue generator for the government is, is taxes. So ultimately it's probably going to trend one direction, but another change, um, yeah, I was just gonna y- say. Yeah, another change on the, so a Roth phase out. So this is for our, our people that, you know, are in the, uh, $200,000 income range going out. So the Roth phase out adjustment, and I'll explain what that is also went up to, um, you start getting phased out at 218,000 and you can no longer contribute to Roth. If you, if you're adjust, a modified adjusted gross income is, is 228,000. So what that means, um, basically for most people, it's going to be their adjusted gross income. If it falls in between those, that 218,000 to 228,000, you start losing that ability to to fully contribute to that Roth. So it was 60, if you were under 218,000, it was $6,500 what you contribute to a Roth. You start getting above that and you it starts, contribute. yep, it starts, starts ratchet, ratcheting out. And then after 228,000, you can no longer, you're no longer eligible. And there's other strategies to, to, to still get some Roth dollars, Money. but, but you're no longer eligible for the normal Roth IRA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, Typically, typically, I, I, when I talk to my clients, and and, the, and we're talking about married filing jointly, the yep. two hundred eighteen thousand. Yeah, so, if if they're you know close or going to be in that phase out phase, we we usually go another route. Yep. You you can usually get Roth contributions inside one of your four hundred one k, especially married filing jointly. Usually, if one of them it. will have that uh, option. So, Roth IRAs are are more. You know, I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't necessarily push the envelope if I was getting close, but yep. with that right. way. Because there are penalties and things. If you if you contribute incorrectly or you too much, there's some excess and you can end up having to pay some penalty and things as so such. And we don't want to want to do that. You want to make sure you're kind of pre, you know, planning ahead and look and forecasting ahead a little bit on that before you jump the gun on that. But if I couldn't contribute because I was making too much money, I might need to recheck the numbers because now I may be able to contribute now that it that it's grown. Yeah. If you're right on the edge, right? Because right? it, it, it went up um uh, the phase out or was 214,000 before. So, so it went up a whole $14,000 more. So if you were right in that at edge last year and your income was about the same, you might be eligible this year. Perfect. Oh, and, and we talked a little bit about modified adjusted yes, gross income. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know if you were going to go there. So I just thought I would go I would there. Ask. Colby, go all there. Right, all right. All go. right. So Cole Jasky, you, you brought up modified adjusted gross income. That's it. It's, seems like really financial advisor speaky type of stuff. So we're just going to try to break that down a little bit for uh, you. So you know, if you maybe do fall into that, you know, if you make that much too much money for the Roth contributions. Yeah. And simple, you know, a simple formula here is take your, your, your gross income minus your deductions. So I'll give a normal married filing jointly 2022 example. 
Um, oh, no, you know what? Let's use the 2023 number right, since right. We're, we're talking about there adjustments. So the standard deduction for a married filing jointly next year is $27,700. So if you your adjusted gross income, if you made $100,000, would be $100,000 minus the standard deduction of $27,700. Then your adjusted gross is $72,300. Modified adjusted gross, you hear, you see that if you Google like Roth contra, uh, contribution limits, it's going to say your modified adjusted gross has to be under that. It's a very similar number. There's just a couple add backs on there. Do, very few people it's going to really apply to, but you know, if you ultimately refer back to your tax advisor on whether or not you're, you're eligible for that, that Roth contribution. No, yeah. that's a great example. A lot- so just because your salary at work is you know, say, right. say the two salaries at work of, of Bailey and Luke are $250,000 to combined, which I, I'm not going to comment if that's true that's or not. That's not true. I'll just say it. It's not true. Come on, Luke, work harder. You would take 250 minus the 27,700 to get the number that you yep. use for right. the Roth country. You wouldn't, you wouldn't take just because you guys make a hundred and 150 together that you make 250. That's not the number that we're, you're going to use for that. So again, like Cole said, uh, we don't give tax advice on this, on this podcast, but we would refer you back to your CPA to check, right. make sure you're eligible. But, uh, that, that's a pretty easy way for you to try to compute it. And most people aren't going to be close enough that you need to go to your tax advisor. Yep. Yeah. Those are great examples though. Cause like a lot of people don't know that stuff and there's a lot of changes going on. Social security, as we talked about student loan forgiveness, if you, just remember that's probably a one-time thing, but be on top of it. Uh, new RA limits. You have any questions, call your advisor, talk to us, talk to your tax person. But I appreciate you guys giving a update on all that. That was a lot going on. A lot of energy today on the podcast. And a lot of dollar and cents going in there. Yeah, well, we couldn't talk about sports much because all our teams teams are terrible. No, we should have talked about the Cowboys more. Dak came back. I love Dak. Remember, he's had a hard go. He has. Uh, Well, injuries recently. Yeah, recently. I mean, uh, last two years. Yeah, his first couple of years, man. He was he was on it. Yeah. Um, Tony Romo. Peace out. Tony yeah. Roma. Little prodigy. Was I, I, I think he's doing okay for CBS though. Yeah, yeah he's making, he's Everybody's great. how much he's money, money, the announcer or like. That's my dream know, job. Like, it's amazing. You start looking at their contracts, like holy crap, yeah. those guys make a lot of money to talk about sports. Go to live sporting on TV. events. Right. Yeah. It's the best it's job ever. All right. So I'm going to uh, shout out. Don't forget to like the podcast. If you like this information, share it. You know what I mean? Because we're trying to educate you guys. We hope you can educate your friends, family, all that. Um, you can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Got social media about everywhere. Thanks to Spin Market and Caleb. And I'm going to end this on a little quote, unless Caleb has something to say. I'll just throw this in there. Um, Follow Spin Market on social media as well. Why not? I'll throw it out there. Shout out. I like it. You can follow me personally on social media if you want. Caleb Westall or CJ9.design is my, all my digital media stuff. So awesome. They make us look and sound good. Like I said. So here we go. Excellence is not a singular act, but a habit. You are what you do repeatedly. The one and only Shaquille O'Neal. Go Cubs. Love it. You've been listening to How to Money with Cole and Cole, the podcast of Essential Financial Group, courtesy of Spin Market. Learn more about the Central Financial Group on their website, www.centralfinancialgroup.com. For now, I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. And we'll see you on the greens. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated. Material discussed is meant for general informational purposes only, and it is not to be construed as tax, legal, or investment advice. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Diversification does not insure against loss. Any guarantees discussed refer only to fixed insurance products and are backed by the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company.